Hello Precious One here, welcome to our broadcast. Today I want to talk about communication in marriage. Many married couples these days don't know how to talk. In fact, communication is missing from many marriages. Most of those marriages are on the verge of breakup. Those that have communication going on in the marriage sometimes would have situations where the man or the woman don't know what to say, how to say it, when to say it. The art of communication must be learned in marriage. Couples must know how to talk to each other. People must learn to know what to say when they are talking to their spouses. It is not everything that we say. The Bible is the best place to find exactly what it takes to make marriage work. And so usually I want us to refer to the Bible so that we will get a very good source of, of inspiration to guide us in our marital work. And so I want us to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Ephesians 4, 15. It says, But speaking the truth in love may grow into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. It says, Speaking the truth in love, we may grow into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. A husband and a wife must be the best of friends. They must be able to share their joy together. They must be able to share their disappointment together. And of course, couples must be able to share their pains together. Unfortunately, that is not the case for many marriages. The Bible says, but speaking the truth in love. So the first thing is that he says, speak. Speak. Husbands and wives must always make the effort to speak in their relationship. The man must be able to freely talk to the wife. The woman must be able to freely talk to their husband. The children must be able to freely talk to their mother and their father. Communication must flow. He says, speak. So a clear sign of unhappiness is when you enter into a couple's home and then they are not talking to each other. But the moment they see you as a visitor and they start talking to each other, it shows that the marriage is not working. It shows that communication is not going on well. Now, speaking brings relief and healing. Many people don't know. The more you talk about your issue, the more you become healed. The more you talk about your issue, the more you become relieved. Especially times that you are stressed, times that you feel like things are not going on well in your life and you want to talk about it. The more you talk about it, the more you feel a sense of relief. Especially when you know that the person that you are sharing what you feel with is able to help you or is able to comfort you or to say words that would encourage you. It brings relief and it brings healing. And so the more couples decide not to talk in marriage, the more they are hindering or they are hampering upon their health and in their healing. Job chapter 32 verse 20, the last part, it says, I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will speak that I may be refreshed. So that means speaking brings refreshment. Your problems have overwhelmed you because you have decided not to speak about it. Now, remember Proverbs 18, 21. Proverbs 18, 21 says something. It said, death and life lies in the power of the tongue. Death and life. So what it means is that I can decide to speak words that will bring death. Or I can decide to speak words that will bring life. They are all in my tongue. So couples must try as much as possible not to speak words of death, but to speak words that will bring life. It must become very difficult for you to utter words that brings death, that brings discouragement, that brings a person down, that brings your spouse down. We must try as much as possible to avoid those kinds of words. We must learn to say good words that brings life. Like your food is nice. You look charming. I like your food today. I like your dressing today. You look good. Charlie Menyawanka. If I had not gotten you, I don't know where I would have been. These are words that bring inspiration. These are words that bring life. Even if the person is tired, the moment they hear those words, they become refreshed because words bring refreshment for themselves. Reduce the extent to which you talk about the negativity of your, of your partner, how bad they are, the things that they are not able to do perfectly. Reduce the amount of time you spend in talking about those things and look at the other aspect of them. Look at how good they are in other things and talk about that one instead. Encourage them to do more rather than pinning them down always with your words of discouragement. That doesn't mean that if I don't like something about my spouse, my wife, I shouldn't say it. I must say it. But the how is the problem. How do you say, yes, she cooked the rice and there was a lot of salt in the, in the, in the rice. But how do you approach it? How do you say it? 
you just call her <coughs> and lambast her and say that your food is not nice or you nicely will say how oh, i feel i feel that today there was too much salt in your in your in your rice what happened probably it was accidental and so the the how is more important than the what you see you can say whatever you want to say but you can you can you can actually speak it in love you can speak it with respect and dignity on honor Genesis 4 15 said speaking the truth in love now he didn't end at the speaking yes we have to talk we have to say whatever we want to say we have to be f- able to freely interact with each other but he says speaking the truth the truth so that means whatever thing that comes out of our mouth should not be lies but truth when we are communicating with each other we must learn to remain on the path of truth we must learn to remain truthful to each other whatever i say to my wife must be the truth whatever she says to me must be the truth we shouldn't couples must not deceive each other when it comes to communication 25 said the man and the woman were in the garden and they were both naked and were not ashamed they were both naked what it means is that the woman knew everything about the man the man knew everything about the woman but they were not ashamed what it means is that i must be able to tell my wife all that i feel my weaknesses must be made known to my wife her weaknesses must be made known to me they were both naked and they were not ashamed i shouldn't be ashamed to tell my wife that i tried something and it failed my wife should not be afraid or, or, or feel shameful to tell me that she did something that was not good today. We must be able to flow with each other. We must be naked to each other and yet not be ashamed of each other. Couples must learn never to pretend. Many couples pretend. There are some men who are broke, but they present themselves as very rich and wealthy before their family. That is wrong. There are some women that will hide things from their husbands. That is wrong. We must not pretend. Eventually, you know the truth will always come out. The truth will always come out. So why would you want to find yourself in a situation where you can't even explain yourself after the truth has, has, has evolved and has come out and everybody is, is, is in the know? Okay, so we must learn not to pretend to each other. Continue, you said, but speaking the truth in love. So one, we must speak. Two, we must speak the truth. Three, we must speak the truth in love. Remember, he didn't even say, speak the lie in love. He said the truth. So even the communication of the truth must be done in love. So sometimes you might be right in what you are saying, but you have to communicate it in love. You might be absolutely sure of what you are saying. If it is an allegation against your partner, you might be absolutely confident in what you are saying. But he says, speak it in love. Even though it is the truth, speak it in love. A lot of times, many couples are carried away by their emotional distresses. The troubles, the wranglings, the confusions, the difficulties that they are passing through is reflected in their words. So don't be carried away by emotional distresses. Anytime you are distressed, watch what you say. Because remember, whatever you are saying is either bringing life to your marriage and your partner or is bringing death. If they are positive words, they will bring life. They will bring good things. They will attract good things and make your partner feel good about themselves. If they are evil words, they will bring your partner down. They will kill their confidence and they will bring death. Because life and death lies in the power of the tongue. There are some things that we need to avoid when we are communicating. Number one, shouting. Couples must avoid shouting whenever they are communicating. It doesn't show respect and honor when you talk on top of your voice. There are some conversations that can happen between a man and a woman that the children must not even hear about. They must not even know that mommy and daddy are speaking about this thing. But many a time you find couples shouting on top of their voices. One, it doesn't show respect. Two, it doesn't show decorum. And three, it is not the best. Number two, you have to avoid insulting. Many couples end up insulting each other when they are communicating. Many a time, when there is trouble in the marriage, when there is an argument in the marriage, you find one spouse or the other insulting the other. That certainly must be avoided. Number three, arguing to win. Arguing to win. 
Sometimes a man always wants to be right. Sometimes a woman always wants to win the argument. No, you shouldn't go into marriage with the idea that you are always right, with the conception, with the misconception that you are always right. You cannot be always right. You are not God. You are man. You are a human. So sometimes you can go wrong. Sometimes you can do wrong things and your partner must get the opportunity to, to correct you. Okay, so don't enter into any form of argument or discussion with the mindset that I must win. Number four, avoid bursting into tears. This one normally applies to women. Most women in marriages, the moment their husbands begin to talk to them, then they begin to cry. Some will actually shed tears. <laughs> okay, and usually they want you to kind of identify with their emotions so they feel that if they cry, then it means that they are speaking the truth. They will communicate to you that they are speaking the truth. But that shouldn't be the case. You are actually preventing your spouse from actually saying whatever they want to say to you because they, at that time when you are crying, the emotions can take over. And any time emotions take over, your cloud, your sense of judgment is beclouded. And so you cannot communicate effectively as you should. So avoid crying when you are communicating. Number five, many couples do the talking and never do the listening. Many couples would like to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. They will not listen to what the other partner is saying. That is wrong. If we want communication to be very effective in our marriages, then we must learn to listen to each other. Bible says that be swift to hear and slow to speak. Be swift, be smart to hear and slow to speak. Anytime your partner is saying, learn to say something, learn to listen. Pay attention to what they are saying. Don't always be found talking and talking without listening to what your partner is saying. Number six, even though it is good to listen, you shouldn't also always listen. There are times that you need to talk. There are people that when they are having conversations with their partner, they will just be sitting there and looking at them like that. Okay, okay, okay. They will, not, they will not contribute in anything. They are just sitting down and listening. No, you don't also have to be silent all through that you have to talk. That, that is communication. Communication is two-way. Okay, this one says it. Another person also says it. And then we are communicating. So it's not like I'm speaking. It's not, it's not a lecture. In marriage, we don't have lecture. We have communication. And so it's communication is a two-way affair. As I speak to my wife, my wife must also speak to me. So the silence must stop. The times that the men don't talk in marriages must stop. Don't come home and then you are all serious and all worked up to the point that when even when your, your wife is asking you what you eat, you don't want to talk. It's like you are angry and you bring your angry your anger to the house. It is wrong. We must talk. And to avoid certain ways like you are always late. You never do things right. You are always late. You are always not there when I need you. Those kinds of words, we should try as much as possible to avoid them. Okay, it's like it's more judgmental. It's 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 more like you have you have made a definite statement that doesn't need any input. Okay, so the, the moment you say I would never do this, you always like you you are always like this. It's like you have passed judgment, and couples must learn not to pass judgment when they are communicating. There are some examples of things that must never come out of your mouth. I will slap you. Don't, don't say I will slap you. I will divorce you. If you if you fool, I will divorce you. Never say that to your spouse. You are swine. You fool. Don't say that to your spouse. I mean, if you are calling your spouse a fool, remember you are also a fool. Because deep call it unto deep. Okay? And the man and the wife are one. He said, the man shall leave the family and shall join himself to the wife and they twin shall become one flesh. So as you are calling your spouse a fool, you are calling yourself a fool. You are hopeless. You are useless. I blame myself for marrying you. Go to hell. You can kill yourself if you are a man. I hate you. Can't you like Mr. X? Can't you behave like Mr. X or Mr. Y? You are ugly. You are a bitch. The marriage, this marriage will not last. You see, these are words that you must try as much as possible to avoid. It should never come out of your mouth. I don't think we are made for each other. This marriage is not working again. You are a bitch. You are a prostitute. Those words must never come out of your mouth. If you misbehave, I will leave you. Don't threaten your, your partner with divorce. Divorce is a good thing that you can use 
as an example or as a statement when you're communicating. I don't love you anymore. You don't love them anymore. Who told you marriage is supposed to be all rosy? Every marriage that there are blocks, there are hurdles that need to be jumped, there are mountains that need to be climbed, there are valleys that need to be descended in every marriage. Who told you marriage, marriage is, is, is bread and butter always? So don't say I don't love you anymore. You love them, make the marriage work. Now, there are other sides of communication. Communication is not always in words. There are times that we need to communicate with our actions. Okay. Now, giving of gifts, for instance, also communicate. They serve as a, as, as, as a means of communication. If I close from work and I buy a piece of chocolate and I bring it to my wife, I'm communicating love to them. If I buy a flower and I give it to my wife, I buy a nice perfume and I give it to my partner, I'm communicating a sense of love to them. Okay. Touching and kissing is also a form of communication. Okay, so sometimes when you close from work and your wife is in the kitchen, sometimes you can go and hug her from behind. Okay, it shows an affection, it shows a sense of affection and respect. Writing of notes, letters, and sending of text messages also communicates. Today you look good, today I'm coming on you. Today it's like you are communicating something. Okay, it's also a form of communication. And then signs and gestures. There are times that I make my face some way and then my wife really understands what I'm saying. Sometimes in public, you must, you must not speak for another person to hear. And so body languages and signs must also, couple man, must learn the body languages of each other so that they can use them as and when it becomes needful. So these are some of the principles that regard communication. It is an art. Communication is an art and must be learned. Let's learn to speak. Let's learn to speak the truth. And as we are speaking the truth, let's learn to speak in love. Communication can make your marriage work if we do it and then we do it well. And I pray for you that may God give you the grace and the wisdom and the capacity to be able to handle your marriage effectively, to be able to communicate right to your partner. And I believe that as you do that, the blessings of God will follow for you. God bless you. See you another time.